Welcome to the Author Gunner Game Podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I have a weird thing in my headphones, so I'm hoping that's only on my headphones and not the actual show recording. It's not in mine, so we should be good. We also have no guest. It's just the two of us today. Yeah, we didn't. To the, to the viewers, they know that. Right. <laughs> to the There's audio. A, to the audio. Surprise! Okay, so press uh, <laughs> uh, just free. Now we we did have show set up and there are horrible things happened and some people had to like bow out and so we will try to get them rescheduled. We completely understood why they had to uh, reschedule on us. So uh, this is our show about anything and everything off road. Tonight we're going to kind of touch on some new stuff and then we're going to do what might be our most like clicked on show from the past was we went and did off roaders for every budget and we did that again. Well, it's the question everybody asks and that everybody's been asking even more since they haven't been able to travel the same way. Right. So and vehicle, pr- it, it should, vehicle prices are insane. So like you gave your kind of like guesstimate of vehicles that should be in certain price ranges. I yeah, went out and did this some is, practical searching. This is a real timestamp because <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it, it, prices are all over the place. So, you know. So everything taken with a grain of salt. Yeah, late fall of 2021 is where we're <laughs> this time exactly. capsule is from. Everything taken with a grain of gear oil. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Oh, gear oil. Some of the ones I found, you might need some gear oil. I uh, don't doubt that for a second. Also, you'll smell it from space. So proceed. But uh, there's been news since we recorded a show. Um, a little bit. You want to go with Ford first? Alphabet. Sure. Okay, so Ford first. Alphabet, yeah, good call. Okay, so New Ranger, which it's about fucking time because the existing Ford Ranger sold in the States, uh, surprise, isn't exactly the, uh, the the Ford Ranger that everybody expect or wanted for. Um, that Ford Ranger, not the one Chris is showing on the screen, but the one that, that you can walk into a dealer and buy right now, it's kind of been on sale for about 10 years uh, globally. So there is a new Global Ranger, and everybody's saying that it has the U.S. in mind, which, you know, is nice because the old one was made for everywhere else, and we just got it as as an afterthought. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So we don't really know much about it other than it kind of has the corporate Ford front end, LEDs everywhere. It's presumably in the same size range this has kind of those ute bed rails and uh plastics just aft of the cab that you expect from the australian models um there's you know it's so difficult to speculate about this because everything that was shown is right hand drive model it's got european plates on it or australian plates on it and it's very 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 much pre-production so we can see that it has a, a Mach E esque screen inside. They have a manual transmission in one of the pre production photos. Um, what else? I don't know. Uh, the wheelbase longer by two inches. Great. Okay. So hopefully there's a little more backseat space because the backseat was pretty tiny in this one. Overseas, you can get a three liter diesel V6. Thank you, Autoblog, for all of these statistics and numbers. <laughs> they also no say. Had. Yeah, two liter diesel, four cylinder, single or twin turbochargers. That means that there's multiple EcoBoost engines available. Ooh. That's good news. Also, the 2.3 turbo, which has been in, uh, let's see, Fiesta Every, ST. Everything. Everything, yeah. Um, that's the same engine in the Maverick. It's the engine you can get in that performance pack Mustang. It's a good engine. I actually don't really know if there's anybody that said much bad about it other than that it's kind of small, but that's it. You know, 10, 10 speed. The same one that's in Bronco. It is the same one that's in Bronco. Yes, you are right. So yeah. uh, New Ranger is good. More competition in the small and small to medium, which in old times, you know, would have been enormous size ranges is good news. And frankly, it looks like the existing Ranger just with a, a, a different front end. So it, wow. we don't exactly know if the chassis and platform are totally new or if they're just updated, kind of like Nissan did, but it should just drive further competition in the small and midsize pickup range, which is 
great across the board. I'm, I'm on board with the front end. It's very, very truck like. Where it looks maverick in F 150. It's, it's exactly what it, it does. It look. good. Uh, these body contour get not gaps, uh, divots is yeah. wrong. Uh, there's like a scallop in is the it, is it, is it concave side. or convex? Concave, uh, it's whichever one looks like it kind of got sideswiped. That's that's my issue. Is it looks like it's already been run into? Yeah, and I and it's on every in it, the like the darker one I'm showing out. Like you can still see, like it looks like it goes in forever. Right. And it it extends to to the bed. Yeah, behind, like behind the wheel, arch. the rear behind the back axle wheel well, but it doesn't have any. So, for the listeners, because this is something that you need to see visually, there's a character line that goes from the front door just behind where the front door opens at its pivot all the way to the back of the truck. But there's a small portion in front of the rear wheel well that doesn't have anything. Yeah. Like it was too hard to divot that in. So yeah, that, and it actually, now that I'm looking at a picture, it actually goes all the way around to the tailgate. It's, it's an well, interesting line. That um, carries the line across where they then stamped Ranger in the bottom of it because right. A truck cannot be made nowadays without us being able to identify an eight foot or eight inch high letters stamped on <laughs> the tailgate to know what the truck is. Yeah, it's, you got to be able to read it from space. So other so, than that, yeah, no, that is a good point. I didn't notice that before. I think just because cars these days are yeah. so. The bed looks you know, crazy short in this photo too. The bed is very that's, that's like very santa cruz short. style bed <laughs> like it looks like it's three feet long i know it's not it's but interesting it's it's interesting because if it is santa cruz short then what about the maverick which you know maverick has a, a decent bed given the size of the vehicle it almost looks I, but, like they slept maverick's bed on this thing maybe it, it kind of <laughs> competes on the price front closer to maverick I mean, closer to Santa Cruz than the Maverick. Maverick is really like in a class of its own on the price front these days. Yeah, it's great uh, value. Yeah, I don't know. So new Ranger coming. Uh, the obvious segue is hopefully when Ford decides to do a Raptor version, if it actually shows up in the states. So this is the current Ranger Raptor, right? <laughs> Excuse me. That is the current Ranger Raptor. Yep. So seen seen here uh, landing after what looks like it might have been multiple feet off the ground. Which I'm okay with. Uh, it did. I, I so looking through images, there were a ton of renderings of what the new Ranger Raptor would look like, and so I started clicking on some of those to be like, "All right, wh where's the speculation here?" Uh, Car driver was like, "It it's almost certain that the next the next generation of Ranger will have Ranger Raptor and will be here in the states." They were like, "It's like ninety nine point nine 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 nine." I'm like, "Wow, guys, that's that's aggressive." <laughs> like. It's an aggressive assumption, but given how much off-roading has taken off over the last few years, and ha, taken off pun because this thing's airborne. Because this thing's airborne, yeah, solid. It would be silly of them to not sell it in the states, and you know it's a little tricky because the existing Tremor, the Ranger Tremor, which is a fucking terrible name and needs to be done away with forever, Ranger even Tremor. if it has heritage. <laughs> um it's it's not cheap you know you're dipping into the mid or high 40s with some options which means is a ranger raptor going to be is is the upcoming raptor r with the v8 the reason that they can then slot a ranger raptor in at 50 or 55 grand you know sure. which people shit people are paying 65 for gladiator 60 for gladiators and 90 grand for 392 Wranglers. So, you know, right. Anybody can finance anything. I do want to give designers props on this because the fuel door does not run into the fender, the wheel, the wheel arch fender there. Chris is now calling out Honda and Nissan. And Nissan. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, there's more than one. I know that. So. <laughs> you know, yeah. No, I mean, it, you know, the thing is, to the untrained eye, it looks exactly the same as the existing vehicle, you know, the existing Ranger, but the existing Rangers, it's a decent truck. It's just ancient at this point. Right. You know, we have a new 
frontier. <laughs> like, come on. But, but is it? Yeah, yeah just yeah. yeah, 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 yeah whatever, not so frontier. I will say, like, we have now two generations of Raptor before. Like that front that the last generation frontier is older than both of these generations of ranger are. So you're not wrong. Yeah, we're we're, we're we have progress here. Progress. Speaking so of progress, is is the next thing progress or is it just? It's lateral. It's it's definitely uh, something. So everybody loves the Mazda CX-5, right? It's like the crossover sweetheart to the Fiesta ST sweetheart of the journalist realm. Um, you know, when, when the Fiesta ST came out, like all the journalists talked great about it and then actually went out and buy them. And the Mazda CX-5, especially as of the refresh, it's kind of been the crossover sweetheart for journalists. And, you know, it's a good vehicle. But Mazda's never dipped its toes into the off-road world. Now they have. So it looks like in trying to play catch up with the likes of the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk and the, the Subaru Wilderness vehicles, especially the Frontier, or not Frontier, shit, the Forester, uh, Mazda has released what they're calling the CX-50. It was speculated a few years ago to just be a more aggressive CX-5 to how the CX-30 is kind of a, a more aggressive uh, CX-3. But the CX-50 has pretty substantial fender flares, you know, plastic cladding fender flares. Very plastic similar cladding. to the wilderness. Very, very similar to the wilderness. <laughs> all, you, all you would have to do is shape it a little. Yeah. Yeah. Fucked up and the super has good. a little more unique flair on its fender flare. Yeah, unique is a good word for it. It's a nice word for it. But the so the CX50 is really what it seems Mazda's attempt to dip its toes into the off-roader world, which is kind of a an interesting angle for Mazda. It's not something they've ever played in before, but if you cover the front end of this thing and you cover, you know, the blatant CX50 stickers on the hood you could fool somebody for thinking this was a subaru or it was a you know a cherokee trailhawk or anything in that vein rav4 a rav4 adventure or trd pro or any of that shit um, i still actually get frustrated that they put the trd stuff on the rav4s <laughs> yeah i mean it, uh, yeah anyway back to mazda anyway. sorry so back to mazda so the cx50 is coming uh i think they're expected to land in early 22 i do kind of think that there's a, a likelihood that they'll make some dulled down versions you know the, the vehicle they showed in all these press images is probably what'll be the top of the line most capable most optioned up vehicle um but it you know it, it's for a CX-5 underneath, it's fairly aggressive. So basically what they did is they took the CX-5, widened the body a little bit, uh, flattened a little bit. You know, imagine they put it on one of those like medieval things where they stretch somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. It's, it's the first time you can get an off-road switch in a Mazda. But it, it's longer, it's wider, it has more ground clearance than the CX-5. It's a little bit lower uh, height-wise. So it but looks fairly aggressive, you know? It's lower, but then they throw that the sidebars and the rack on it, which they yeah. get exactly yeah. the same height, if not taller. The press <laughs> photos have this obnoxious rack on top that's got like eight inches between it and the roof itself. But it's, most like, people will probably look at it the first time and think it's a CX-5 or a CX-9 and not really get it. But it, it's actually a fair amount different. So they're going to build it in Alabama, in Mazda and Toyota's joint place. Uh, it's, you know, it's still a crossover. It's a decided crossover, but it's a little more off-roady. They'll probably gear it a little bit lower. There'll probably be a couple switches that do something like Super X mode and... Uh, you know, it's it's going to have the new hybrid, which is really the big, the big kick. So Jeff so had 
a big article that he well not a big article but he had a he had a take on these and that uh so jeff glucker from universe for the yeah <laughs> and his 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 take was like these are gonna not age well these are gonna look like an of the era type vehicle and it's gonna look silly and, mm-hmm. and so it made me think about like subaru brat oh, and Jesus. dodge rampages and what was that plymouth thing we were talking about the other day with uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, their equivalent right they, like but they made like none of them are- Right now, they look kind of silly, but in like 25 years time, people are going to find like, oh, I found the CX-50. No, this one has the yeah. whatever. Like, it's just going to be... When this thing's on its fourth owner, it's not going to be good. <laughs> but, no. you know, out of the box, like, if you if you have a Saturday and you're cross-shopping something to get you to the hiking trailhead, and your options are Cherokee Trailhawk, Mazda CX-50, Subaru Forester Wilderness, uh, the Outback, Rav Four Adventure tier, yeah, yeah. like you know they're throwing the hat into the ring, which is good which to is... see. But it, I just wish, and I think we all wish that they had spent that time and money doing like something Mazda Speed. Yeah, it'll be interesting because uh, I don't think anyone's going to be able to cross shop what you just described anymore. I think those are all going to be like cost. Everything you just listed <laughs> is going to have to be ordered. Based on the way, new is also a good point. Yeah, the dealer is going to have one of these things, and it's going to be test drive it and see if you like it. And and if you do, you place an order and it shows up six months later. Right. But I don't know. It's you know the Mazda's got the dynamics going for it compared to all the other ones. Um, It speculation here, obviously, but you know they drive well compared to. Hopefully the CX-50 will drive just like a CX-5. Which is to say, fine. Yes. That's it. Like it's the, the, the Forester has been known for not being the most exciting thing to drive. It's kind of numb behind the wheel. They're okay. They're, they're they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. The CX-5 has a reputation where like, I mean, you lease one. We do. I've chased down. Jeff's wife has one. <laughs> Jeff's wife does still have one. Does she? Okay. But yeah. Uh, but I've chased down fast cars in that CX-5 and it, you know. And I know, I know. It actually least tells you what it's doing. One or two of the guys at Driving Wild, awesome. Like their, their yep. spouses, like this, these were the vehicles they purchased for their spouse because of how much they like driving it. I don't think that. And I'm trying to be kind to Mazda here because I fucking love Mazda and I've owned, you know, Miata and, and they're one of my favorite companies, but I don't think it's a matter of how much, how much, you know, driving something comparable would be worse. Yeah. That's, so, yeah. Totally fine. Anyways, you glitched totally a little fine. bit on your answer there. So. Well, <laughs> there, there are crossovers in 2021. There's bound to be glitches. Yep. Uh, and computers in 2021. So, all right. That brings us to our off-roaders for every budget. We, <laughs> so the premise here is Ross basically lifts everything out in his head that he thinks should apply in a certain age group. And like Ross has some experience. Age group. Age and price, <laughs> price group. I have uh, some experience. Yeah. I, and in all fairness, I've shopped all of the following price groups short of our top two you know right like fantasy groups so you know off-roaders at every budget it's it's a topic that comes up almost daily in the off-road world because whether you're looking to spend five thousand dollars on something to get out on the weekend and beat the crap out of and you know you throw it on a trailer or it's like your side toy or whatever uh or You know, whether you're talking about something you want to drive every day that can withstand some of the wheeling that you do, it's it's only something that comes up with increasing frequency given how much people are into the off-road hobby and realize the accessibility of it and enjoy it. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's a good topic. And I mean, I don't know. I've had plenty of people come to me and say, Hey, what should I buy? I have, I have uh, fourteen thousand three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh fucking no. going crisis. No, anyways, 
So no, it's, it's a fun thing to cover and it's ever changing. So it'll, it's recurring. So vehicles that should be in our first category. So we went with a max of $5,000 for this first category. So you have a theoretical $5,000 to spend and you want to go into the woods or you want to go on the trails. What do you do? So I have put together a list and it, it's not, you would think $5,000 and the caveat for everything here is, you know, if you have $5,000 to spend, uh, do your due diligence. We right. are... We are not legally or fiscally <laughs> responsible for when things might go wrong. And uh, in the five thousand dollar <laughs> category, like something's going to go wrong. Like it's going go to wrong. go wrong. Yeah, it's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Yeah, batteries, so, alternators, brakes, like engine, transmission, differentials, speed sensors, drive shafts, speed sensors, cam sensors, CV joints. Something's going to go wrong. So. <laughs> With that said, $5,000 is still a good place to park some money if you've never off-roaded before and you want to see if it's what's for you. So, And there, the there are list, some, there's some stout vehicles in your list. Why, why don't you just are. go through it real fast? <clears throat> yeah, we'll do, we'll do rapid fire here. So Jeeps. Jeep is, if you think off-roading anywhere in the world, you think Jeep. So XJ Cherokees built from 1980-something to 2001 is... The boxy square headlight, rectangular headlight, whatever you want to call it, that Cherokee, everybody knows it. Great vehicle. If you can find one in this price range and is in good shape, buy it. It will not depreciate at this point. So in addition to the XJ, well, also on. the YJ. If you, if you can find an XJ right now, it's probably the very last of the good Y or XJs. Yes. They, don't, they just don't. And if you can find a two door with a four liter and, and the manual transmission and it's clean and doesn't have any rust, buy it. And I promise you it will appreciate. Yeah. That's and not you'll have a fucking good time. Yeah. Like they're fun. You know, they're if you the can get visibility for below five, definitely grab it. Cause it's probably worth 20. <laughs> it, yeah, it'll be worth on bring a trailer. If, if it's got under 100,000 miles and it's in good shape without rust, like you're not going to lose money on it. Yep. And, you know, the four liter is reliable, the 2.5 is reliable. It's like just, they're great vehicles, great visibility, easy to use, easy to wrench on. Uh, probably the most accessible off-roader at any budget. Um, so in addition to the, the XJ, the YJ, the rectangle headlight Wrangler that was based on the CJ that was built from 87 or 88 to 95 or so the reason that I'm in the off-road world. And then if you can find a TJ, sometimes there's TJs floating around in the five grand or the six grand range and you can negotiate them down, you know, find something with a four cylinder 2.5 with the auto and they're, you know, they're cheap. It might need a little work. And by that, I mean, it will need a little work, but you know, it's a regular. So then, then you get into the grand Cherokee, ZJ, WJ, even the very, very, very early six cylinder WKs they're all good off-roaders. They all have traditional four-wheel drive, assuming you don't buy one of the ones that has two-wheel drive. But same thing, easy to wrench on, easy to easy to drive in the woods, and those, pretty those, stout and pretty easy to you know find parts for. Those WKs go into like the early two thousands. Like they're they're around. No, w WK, the one you have up on the screen right now, is actually like two thousand five to two thousand ten. Yeah. Which is that's WJ. If you're only getting an 11 year old car for five grand, yep, and they're, they're pretty Spartan by modern standards. But if you can find one in the six grand range, you know, negotiate the person down, like you take care of them, they'll take care of you. So then we get off of the you know, the mainstream kick a little bit. <laughs> We're going to bounce around a bit here. So Suzuki Samurai, obviously, you can get a good Samurai, they're like. Kind of the same size as a UTV. Same thing with the Amigo. You know, like it's it's smaller than a Razor Four. I think right tiny. right when we started the podcast, I actually saw an Amigo like out in the wild. Like, mm. met my wife for lunch one day, awesome. and in the parking lot was an Amigo, and I was like, "Pardon me, ma'am, I have to go take pictures of this. I'll be right." Back. <laughs> Speaking of, I saw a Jaguar Project Eight, one of the oh yeah sedan. Yeah. I saw one of those in a parking lot yesterday. I was like, oh my God, 
Like, this is amazing. Don't they have splitters like everywhere, like diffusers and splitters? Wings, and, yeah. splitters, <laughs> like scoops, you know, air outlets. It's crazy. Apparently, they only made 300. Cool car, though. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so if you can find a Samurai or Amigo, they're good vehicles if you take care of them, you know, make sure. And the caveat for everything is make sure it's been taken care of and make sure you're willing to put up with whatever kind of bullshit it is that these have. Um, Montero kind of quickly becoming the focus. You skipped of, one. <laughs> I skipped one, but we're coming back to that because okay, that ties, in, ties into the next one. Monteros are pretty good. Uh, there's, I think, a few things to keep an eye out on them that can be catastrophic. I, I don't know them well enough, but Montero, XL7, those are all good. First gen Xterra, if you can find a rust-free Xterra manual you know you can get a, a real four-wheel drive xterra with stick um that's the third gen montero i know that you have on the screen if you can and find the newest version for the cheapest price that's the best <laughs> it is it is and they're fairly stout you can i think you can fit like 31 and a half inch tires or so on them without a lift uh but that thing's got a fucking dunk on it it is yeah it's a big there's booty. so much rear overhang yep so what'd you say? Yeah, first gen uh, X Terra. First gen X Terra is increasingly difficult to find without rust or without a transmission problem. I don't, I think the engines are okay, but they're, you know, it's a Nissan from the early 2000s. So it should be all right. Um, the next few are, you know, they're, not the best off-roaders, but they're plucky and they will get you, you know, more places than you expect. So any Subaru Outback, like literally anything with the Outback name, even when Subaru made that sedan, that was really a legacy. The and sus? Was it? A, <laughs> is that what they called it? I don't know if they called it that Do you or remember not. that? It's they, the they SUS. Built, yeah, it was an Outback legacy. legacy. Yeah. It was a legacy on like Outback suspension. It was, it was cool. Uh, and then, you know, any Forester, like they'll go places for lack of a better phrase. Is that Toyota's? So, you know, whatever. But they. Uh, Google is failing me. They, that's okay. Everybody knows what a Forester, first gen Forester looks like, but they'll surprise you. You know, they, they're light, full time all wheel drive, get them with a manual, get them with an auto. Uh, but they'll they'll take you places that you would be absolutely shocked. Yeah, that's the out. There was a second gen of that too. I think they had even was. more ground clearance. But, that might be angle yeah. of that photography there, but yeah. So then uh, Ford Ranger, you know, first gen boxy one, which correct me if I'm wrong, which shared a lot with the Bronco two. Two, yeah. And then the whatever subsequent Ranger you can find up until any you know when it went out of production in in 2011 or whatever the generations um, generation. okay, it was 2011 third generation maybe i don't know yeah then other others in this category for uh for shit chevy blazers uh the s10 and any kind of zr2 that's attached to that is fairly decent for sub five grand how many years are and those those were 90 2002 ish eight to 2003 or four yeah i want to say but they're you know pretty, they're not pretty sure i got a buddy who has a near-death experience in one of these <laughs> they're oh yeah they're horribly <laughs> unsafe and just generally kind of shitty but they're light they have four-wheel drive, like real four-wheel drive with lower range transfer case, yep. I think. And I don't know they're kind of coming around on the cool factor. I, I feel like most of them are unsafe at speed, but yet 35 miles an hour on a forest road, you're okay. You're okay. 35 <laughs> miles per hour might be at speed in those things. That's true. That's true. <laughs> and then the final sub five or around $5,000 is the Forerunner. You know, if you can find a good second or third gen forerunner, even a fourth gen forerunner at $5,000, buy it. 
I got bad news. It. There are no fourth gens near that price point right now without 300,000 miles plus. Yeah, but 250, 275,000 miles on one, you buy it at 5,500 bucks or so, and it'll take care of you, you know? Yeah, Keep that's not it. that's not the current market right now. <laughs> so then pro tip, buy a third gen. Exactly. Yeah. Go they're go. all they're all the third gens are awesome. They will go endlessly. Um you can get a manual. Yep. Good luck. You can get an electronically locking rear differential. Good luck. But yeah. Um <clears throat> is you're that one it. of the ones you're planning to discuss in the sub five range? No. That's not. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. No, this is. I forgot I had it up. Yeah, I switched over. <laughs> so, so sub $5,000. This was just me browsing today. I just, I, I, I set, I should say what I set my limits to, right? So, this is all within 250 miles of me. Trucks, SUVs, and I think I even had minivans selected. Um, You'll but the Sienna, just saying. Sub. Sub five grand. There, there were no Jeeps that I could find near me. Uh, sub five grand. Uh, there were no Toyota products that I could really find sub five grand uh, of any kind. But I found a Honda Element for 4,400 bucks. <laughs> and all wheel drive, full time all wheel drive. I don't, I don't know if this one has the all wheel drive or not. I don't know if that one has all wheel drive, but they were so, available with all wheel drive. So, and they're some of the best quiet car camping vehicles that you can find. And the reason I, I pulled the trigger on this one being my pick is the split rear tailgate. The Land Cruiser guy in me was like, yes, lift gate and tailgate mixed together. You got cover and a table mm-hmm. always. Now, I will say this cover is not nearly as long as my cover was in the Land Cruiser. Uh, you're gonna have to really lean in underneath if you want that cover. But you can um, flip the tailgate up and and duck under. Right. So if you want to move your, <clears throat> your table just a little bit inside. So the other thing I don't remember is uh, I remember in my dad. My dad had a first gen CRV mm-hmm. like in late '90s, and this plastic piece that that covered the spare tire would come out and become a table. I don't know if the Element has Whoa, that really? same feature or not. Yeah, it would come out. It was like your. It was like built in tailgating, right? It was okay, a, that's rad. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, so I, like I don't that. remember if this was that way or not. The other thing about these is you were supposed to be able to like wash out the entire interior, but that's a complete myth. <laughs> Somebody said that and Honda engineers went, wait, what? And then a bunch right, of these right. got ruined by people spraying out the inside. Of <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining somebody taking a hose to it. And as soon as it starts spraying, it would just be like, Oh, fuck. Oh, no. <laughs> so, I do know that the front two seats fully recline enough to the point where they're almost beds, mm-hmm. like almost comfortable kind of thing. Um, so if you're on a super budget, I, I was I was leaning here now, like $4,400 cool. $4, cool. is that much of a budget. Like That's a no, lot of money. <laughs> that's not nothing, but there are lift kits available for the element. Yep. You can put like some kind of chunky-ish tire on it. Uh, but they're they're cool, and if you really have money after, if you buy an element with not a lot of money, and then you make a lot of money, you can turn it into a pop top. Yes, you a can. Full camper top. There, those are definitely available. So, and those are also in the twenty five to thirty five range if you find a good one. But yeah, elements are cool. Uh, I, remember the Element SC? Was there a supercharged version? I don't, I don't know. I don't think super, I don't think it stood for supercharged. I think it, it was just like sport. I remember that there was nothing sporty about it whatsoever. This is what I remember about these things is this blue gray combo. Cause one, one passed me yesterday on the, or like one drove across an intersection that I was mm-hmm. sitting at with that blue gray, but on the outside. <laughs> well, it was just cladding because it, this was yeah. 2000, this was 2003 to 2006 in American ve- vehicles sold in America. Right. It's like, Keep how much cladding, cladding. do you want? Because <laughs> I want you're all of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which reminds uh, me of adding something to the list for the next category. And the next category is $10,000. $10, 10 grand. <laughs> 10 grand is a good amount of money to spend on something that you can take into the woods, take on a trail, and also drive in everyday life. So, 
the segue on the cladding section here is Chevy Avalanche. You find a good yep. Avalanche, sub 120, 150,000 miles, you can actually fold that mid gate and use it as a place in which you can sleep. You just drop the second row, you drop the mid gate, and you put your legs into the bed. And it's, you know, it's insulated, it's covered, and, and then you don't have to deal with any kind of camping shit. So all avalanches of, are good. All of my avalanche pictures didn't want to load. That's okay. I, I'm a sucker for the avalanche. I, I owned an avalanche for like seven years. Um, one of my best friends still has it after my brother had it, and it was a hand-me-down from my dad. So avalanches are great. Keep them alive. Uh, they have a limited slip or any locker out back based on what you get. And they're just, you know, they're stout trucks. They're basically Chevy 1500 underneath. So Avalanche is a good place to be in 10 grand range. Um, you can even find some second gens in, in that price point, but they have a few other little quirks. So $10,000. We'll do rapid fire here. Forerunner. You can get a fourth gen Forerunner for $10,000. A good one. You can get probably some kind of super early 80 series land cruiser with a ton of miles on it for ten thousand dollars uh currently at this price point right now yes and i think ross froze which will be really interesting for our recording uh let's see if he comes back or not um but i will say like mine god it's been over a year since i sold mine and mine was 10k would be over double of what i sold it for then uh, mine was more of a high mileage 80 series. Um, the interesting thing about that was like, if I had put it on more of an auction website, I probably would have done much better. Um, but I got a little panicky from listing something as no reserve. And so I didn't do the, the auction website. Um, and Ross is back now. So <laughs> nothing, nothing has, uh, uh been missed. Um, the other one that uh, Ross was about to talk about would be Land Rover Discoveries. I 100% know that those are available at 10K and below. I can't hear you yet. <laughs> you're also, right. hide your wallet. I'll try that again. <laughs> yeah, if you buy a $10,000 Discovery, you're either going to get something that's perfect or that needs $10,000 in the next two years. Yeah. So, but uh, that's you can those the Discovery with a five speed manual. Right. Those are known for head gaskets, but that is a known thing. Replacements exist. Like tutorials exist. Same thing with also the land cruiser. It's already been fixed. And it'll need to be fixed again. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is a shout out to my buddy, Ron, who every time I send him an old discovery, he's like, yeah, come down. I'll just show you how to change the head gaskets because he's had multiple <laughs> discoveries. He loves the things. He is so good at it. He can do them super fast. And he's I don't still know. discovering why they're terrible. <laughs> i'm gonna text Sorry, that to ron. him later uh so ron plays a fun game with he's got a bunch of toyota friends uh because he's a land rover guy and every time he passes a toyota uh he gives it the finger and takes a picture uh of him giving the finger to the toyota uh so i hope his, he has an instagram for that that is amazing he, he doesn't he he keeps it to himself uh we text him amongst each friends but every like the where I live, everyone drives a Land Rover. I'd be driving around with my finger up in traffic all the time. Like I can't, oh, I yeah, can't play just, the game. It's your base so. level existence. Yeah. Uh, also, fun fact: I cannot open Google Docs right now for some reason. So you're going to lead in <laughs> for the next round of vehicles, and uh, and we'll so, know, discuss from there. We didn't get all the way through. Uh, so okay. you have H3 Hummer on here for ten grand. Yeah, man. H3 Hummers are deceptively amazing off road. Everybody kind of thinks that it's, you know, Chevy Colorado in a Hummer suit, but they are actually very, very good in the woods. Uh, they're stout. They're reasonably reliable. They're kind of smallish looking. They're smallish looking because they have no greenhouse whatsoever because that was part of like, you know, the, the early 2000s. <laughs> let's make the, you know, let's follow the Chrysler 300s vault like styling and just make the windows fucking tiny but they're they're really good off-road and you know it, it's a shame that there's so little support for them are these are these still the air vent or the air intakes uh no i don't think so oh because the h1 hummer they're right there the h2 hummer i know they kept them there 
I don't think so, okay. but I could be wrong. Uh, hopefully somebody corrects me, but yeah, the H3 is good. And you know, it's, it's, it's weird because you can find an H3 in the eight to $12,000 range. And there were a number, it, a number of Hummers as I was browsing today. And I was like, I did yeah. the, I did that uh, truck one last time. So I didn't want to do it again. Right. Um, but if, if you find an H3 alpha, you're talking, you know, $25,000 right. for the V8. But so all right, my internet has decided that now is the time to come back to. <laughs> I love that I knew right when you said it because I saw the cursor <laughs> pop up. Thank you, Google Doc. Yep. yep. All right. So uh, the next one is are we are we just going down a list? Yeah, you can keep going. FJ Cruiser. Okay, ten thousand dollar FJ Cruiser. You're gonna find an early 07 or 08 automatic FJ, and it's gonna have a shit ton of miles on it. But it's you know it's a four liter V6. Toyota V6 and and five speed, so it'll keep going. And you know, a locking rear diff. Yeah, good luck. You will probably not. You you might be able to find one with the A track, but you probably won't be able to find one with the rear locker. They all have A track. I know that for sure. They do. They do that. They which that is Toyota's. Don't think they all have the rear locker though. That that might be an option. <laughs> I, I I will say like, I've written a lot of sales ads for fj cruisers and almost all of them had the locking <laughs> rear differential button so desirable uh, yeah. but they all have a track <laughs> they all this one picture here also has some of the greatest wheels ever built those eight Which, hole wheels okay oh, i fucking love those complete side note and i don't i forgot to text you this i totally saw a chevy tahoe with those wheels on it Sandball and i was pattern. like what like it my Simple mind, pattern. if you could have seen my mind, like it was, you know, the Zach Galifianakis yeah. in the casino with the math <laughs> and the number, like I was, what is happening right now? Like six by 5.5 or six by 139.7. It's the same bolt pattern. Yeah. So my head was exploding. The fact that I can rattle that offhand really tells you <laughs> that I did own a Chevy Avalanche and have owned Toyota SUVs for the last five years. So Wait, so we could put these on your GX, right? Yeah, that's kind of the game plan. <laughs> yes they're great okay. they're awesome looking wheels they they're look good like they they're like a cross between phone dial like, i don't know about that but but kind of the um the Krager soft eights okay and like the mickey thompson yeah or american racing like off-road style oil yep so yeah they're cool wheels anyways fj is on there Discovery's on there. Frontier, you can find a first or second gen Frontier on there. And in the same vein, you can find the second gen Xterra in this price range. Yep. Uh, Volvo XC70. Decent all-wheel drive system. Can go places most people wouldn't expect. Um, I wouldn't run the Rubicon in it, but I probably wouldn't oh. hesitate to do... Are these the cross countries? Yeah. The the So first it was called the V70 cross country. Then it was called the XC70. They're, you know, lifted wagons. They have ground clears. They have cladding because, again, 2000s. Is... This is early 2000s. Everything had cladding. Yeah, My yeah, favorite part is cladding. cladding's coming back. We look at the new WRX. It is. <laughs> or the CX50. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> but, yeah, the XC70 is, you know, they're safe. Um, if the first and second owners have taken good care of them, they're reliable. If you can find a one-owner XC70 with, like, somewhat low mileage and – it's been taken care of there, you know, they'll probably go forever. So they're, they're cool things. I think there's a small aftermarket and like cult following for them for, you know, off-roading. Um, there was also that V70 R for people who like going fast and also, uh, having the I'm worst turning radius of all time. Pretty sure I put but, up an image of a Hot Wheels car. <laughs> I don't think that's a real car. Somebody did a lot of detail on a model, I think. Could be. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> what is in the... Yeah, no. What is in the windshield, though? That's I don't odd. know. That's odd. That could be a Hot Wheels car. You could that be the right. banging, but, yeah, was, banging Olsen? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's that's one of the last ones. And the final in the $10,000 price range, which is a place you can park money and probably not lose any is the isuzu via cross oh the via having cross. having owned one i cannot particularly recommend it from a daily life 
aspect, but from a unique, odd, and shockingly capable angle, they are some of the the weirdest and best things you can find. And is this uh, a normal photo of one? That is a nor that is so that photo is probably for like one of the early 1997, 1998 models. Um, the Isuzu V-Across, in case listeners don't know, shared platform engine and transmission with the Trooper. And that means it also shared a lot with the GM vehicles that were associated with that time. But the V-Across is one of the strangest things ever built. Um, the doors, you know, the plastics, all the stampings were done from a commitment that they had to basically use the molds until the molds wore out and then retire the vehicle. So they didn't sit down and, you know, like, like Porsche or Ferrari does now and say, we're going to build 5,000 of these. We're going to build 3,500 of these, or, you know, even in some of like the Hellcats and stuff we've seen, we're going to build 707 of these because, that's how many horsepower it has. There was no correlation. It was basically, we're going to build these until the stampings are bad. And that was it. And that was when it ended. And they only ended up building like 4,300 of them. I think 30, between 35 and 3,800 came to the States. But, you know, they're, they're plucky little things. They handle amazing. Uh, and they're incredibly quirky. And I, I fucking loved it and hated it more than anything else I've ever owned. Uh, the front seats fold all the way back so you can recline them into the back. The back seats fold a bunch of different ways. There's the spare tire access is from the inside. They're just so strange. So the um, most expensive one I could find. Oh, wait, that's a, that was only 100 miles away. Let's go nationwide. Oh, nope, still four listings. Uh, the most expensive one I could find was uh, 12999 Which is probably a good price. And, you know, and that's there's less, no issues. less than a hundred thousand miles. That's a buy. That's a buy because it, it will not depreciate. The especially. cheapest one is 3,800. Uh, probably as <laughs> an engine. They, they do have some quirks. Uh, the all wheel drive system, four wheel drive system has, it's called torque on demand. It was like an early uh, traction control, a track kind of system. And it, it has issues. Um, brake pumps i've read it can be problematic the window regulators like to fail the air conditioning is problematic the door regulators you have through the door um door locks are an issue and then there's you know a slew of other things but you know there's been a few people who swap like six liter v8 you know the ls motors or lt motors into them and they're dead reliable and they go any place you point them and i fucking love that thing it's just so awkward which is, but it is very awkward. Uh, very awkward. We do need to speed up, though. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, $20,000. Oh, no, no, You're hold on. I got to do my $10,000 pick. Oh, shit. Sorry. Because mine's the practical one. Mike finds the thing you can actually go buy right now. As is tradition. Uh, it's the shittiest Wrangler TJ I could find. 98. And it looks like it has lived a rough life. <laughs> it's not... So it's a, a, a four cylinder. So it's a 2.5 with the five speed and they're on 31s and it's crunched and they want $10,000. $10,000. Lincoln, Nebraska. Go get it. A uh, bigger question here. What is in the background of that last picture? I don't know. Something Some with, kind of rock bouncer. Yeah. Long travel that, suspension. That suspension is almost the same height as the floor to the Jeep's hood. Don't, don't buy this. No, for, don't, uh, don't go buy this, but this was the ch- this was the cheapest Jeep I could find. Like I didn't have any in my lower category because I could not find one under ten grand. This one is exactly at ten grand. Like I was I was always trying to find something that I could get in. Oh, it's got a cold air. There's more on rust on there than anything needs. Dude, they it's- replaced sections of the frame. <laughs> no, I'm not even. <laughs> You spend ten thousand dollars on this, you no, are. no. Okay, what was our next jump? Uh, what a fool in their money. Okay, twenty five thousand uh, dollars. Jeep JKs, JK Rubicon, JK Unlimited Rubicon. 
easily had well within the $25,000 budget. Known entities, they're fine. Buy them. 80 series Land Cruisers. Yes. Good place to be. Um, $25,000. And definitely 100 series Land Cruisers. Like that's the or LX 470s, 450s, and 450, 470. You're right. For, yeah, 450. Then I'll go lower. Uh, the only thing, though, is when you get into the, the Lexus, you get that adjustable height suspension stuff that yeah. can fail. You can um, remove it, though. The airbag deletes. And... What we don't have on the $10,000 or the $25,000 list that we should include, Sequoias. Yeah. They're like, yeah. they're like first 80, gen or second gen. Yeah. 80 to 85% of a Land Cruiser. Yep. Yes. You're losing out on that yep. solid front axle. It's got IFS. Like it's not yep. as rugged, but oh. it'll, but it, and when you get into the second gens, you get the five, seven, <laughs> do about everything else. I yeah. bought mine for 14. <laughs> you know what else I just realized? We don't have the Lexus GX on here anywhere. No. And I, hey, you own one. <laughs> <laughs> we, we omitted all three of the vehicles that we own between the two of us. <laughs> that's actually really funny. Suburban's not on here either. But nope, I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it it happens. But like mine, the category that my Suburban is like, because it's the premiere, like it doesn't fit. Like it, there were tons of GM trucks for low dollar amounts. And I just didn't want to deal with it. So There's when I not. when I get to the 25 one, I couldn't get something up high enough. I couldn't get to 25 for whatever reason. I, I picked a Super Duty. Which I picked a motor? Uh, Gas or diesel? I didn't. 6.4. Six, 6.4, four. Six, four. okay. Turbo diesel. Not even the 7.3. But the, it's what was near me and available. So... Yeah, was, I, and, I, and he only wanted 18. The thing is, with 214,000 miles on a 2008 F-250, <laughs> oh, no. for almost 20 grand. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Let me get into <clears> the <throat> uh, the things that add value. Five-inch exhaust, HKS tuner, sinister kit, upgraded radiator, eight-inch suspension lift, LED headlights. Uh, these don't actually add value. They're decreasing nope. value. no. Nope. Every one of those, I'm pulling money out of my offer. <laughs> You're better off buying a late 90s, as in 10 year older Ram. Oh, dude, this oh god, the interior is, of that looks like somebody rugged. <laughs> like, oh god. But I love used car shopping like this. It's so much fun. It is so much fun, but it's, it's also a, a blatant warning. Yeah, to don't what not to do with your money. Oh, so. I found a twenty eight hundred dollar element. It looks front way better than the other one I picked. Front wheel drive, definitely front wheel drive. Yeah, definitely. Um, also in the gray area between ten and twenty five, we have to say GX uh, four seventy. Yes. It has to come up. It's got to come up. It's. I. I almost want to. Uh, and then also in gray area between twenty five and fifty, have to say GX four sixty. Yes which is globally sold as the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado. Uh, it is I 150 series. Mm-hmm. So 150 series. There are sold listings uh, on a certain automotive auction website that doesn't start with a B. Uh, <laughs> That's not an auction site. That's a, uh, nope, <laughs> not going to make that joke. Continue. Yep. So there, there are four GX 460s that have sold, like two f- final sale, right? Two of them are above 25. One, one was 30, one was 25.7. And then two of them, uh, one was 17.7 and the other one was 28 or okay. 2,850. Are so, they all pre-facelift uh, uh, before 2014 models? No, one's a 15 and then uh, an 11 and two 13s. Okay. So the 15 so, went for the most. Yeah. Makes sense. But yeah, GS460, as we all know, is you know closely related to the fifth gen forerunner, full four-wheel drive running gear. One of them's uh, on TRD Pro Wheels, and I really like it. I'm gonna send the TRD Pro Wheels. They look so good on it. I know they really look I, good. <laughs> my brother put 
TRD Pro replicas on his on his forerunner, and it looks so good. And right. every time I look at it, I'm like, shit, those would look so good on the. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, let's do fifty because we are Weird. long past. It. Yeah, we're closing our, in on an hour time. already. So there is a ton of new stuff available, and with fifty being the top of it, right? So I'm going to go ahead and say the thing that we already talked about earlier, but Ranger Raptor when it yep. comes here will be in mm -hmm. in around this price point mm -hmm. and it, it will inevitably be an excellent option um with you know tons of capability at high speed and the ability to do low speed and factory warranty you know what, like once you talk about fifty thousand dollars you're really talking about something that has a warranty for the most part so that kind of speed and <laughs> prowess is, you know, it, it's what it is. you're going to giggle at my pick. <laughs> All right. Hit it. Oh, I'm just going to jump straight to it. So Probably I was it. struggling to find something below 50 that I wanted. So I found this Dodge Ram 5,500. 5,500. <laughs> with a, with a dump bed. So I can pull the dump bed. And to be honest, the interior of this truck looks actually nice compared to the last Those truck. actually look pretty clean. Uh, but I'll pull the dump bed. We'll do some kind of utility bed on the back. But yeah, six, seven. Is, why, what is all that moisture by the oil <laughs> fill cap? That I is, don't know. I mean, that could just, that could just be the, uh, uh, you know, the, the gasket on the cap itself, but that's. It could, it could. That, that might make me a little worried. That might be, a, be why it's still for sale. But yeah, 5,500 dump truck is what I picked. But you could put basically like any, not off the shelf is really a thing here, but like any. Any of the utility you know, beds, any of the, the four wheel, yeah. four wheel campers. FWF, uh, yeah. four wheel, FW. Yeah, any of those guys. Um, but yeah, big camper, you know, you can put a lift on it and run like 37s and basically drive that thing anywhere without issue i may have been Six, uh, good thinking about rebuilding zach's bowman's Oof. ram and slide in that was not a 5500 no his was 2500 25 or 35 he has another 35. he is in a ramp 2500 right now so maybe it's 35 i don't know is it wait is that like the does that belong to the company or does Kevin also have one? Kevin also, they both have. Okay. They both have giant Ram. Heavy duty Rams. Uh, Kevin's is a dually. Zach's is like one of the last diesel manuals that you could buy. Um, but yeah, apparently that's the unofficial vehicle of UTV driver is, uh, is Cummins diesel Ram that in Toyota Tacoma. So Oh man, Anyways. that's not what I wanted. So I fifty thousand dollars. Let's uh, let's run through fifty quick. So Wrangler Unlimited Rubicon Wait, uh, we, is the oh yeah, the yeah these are yours. Got it. Sorry. Yeah, these are that's the shoe in Bronco of any capacity. You know, uh, Sasquatch Sas is a leg right around. You could get into it below fifty. Chevy ZR2 with the Multimatic DSSV shocks is still a good choice it's getting a little little a little old um we're i think we're ready for a new zr2 and i think the bronca or the ranger raptor will instigate that i think we'll um, get a silverado version of the zr2 before we get yeah but this, we saw the silverado zr2 it's not the same like people kind of think about the zr2 as like a desert runner you know the silverado has got an extra 1500 pounds on it it's not going to be that kind of vehicle. Um, the Frontier Pro 4X is good. I, I put 750 miles on it. I drove down a few dirt roads. I didn't wheel it, but you know, you spend between 37 and 45 on a Frontier Pro 4X. It's a, it's a nice place to spend time. It's a good vehicle. It, it, they're good. Uh, Ranger Tremor, you said Tundra, the best Tundra you can buy. You can put a shit ton of suspension on a Tundra and basically drive those things with the five, seven and the six speed uh, until the, the world comes to an end and not have any worries. Grand Cherokee Trailhawks get a, make sure you have warranty, but they're surprisingly <laughs> capable and, and surprisingly good on road. We don't, we know the outgoing Grand Cherokee Trailhawk could be had with the V six 
sub 50 and the V8 pushed it to around 50. The upcoming Cher- Grand Cherokee Trailhawk, the one picture here, is going to be in the 50s if you get the V8. I think it just crosses 50 with the V6, but you know, just an evolution of a great vehicle. And that that's kind of what it is. Staying in the Stellantis family, $50,000 or so will buy you a used power wagon. Not mm. listed here, but great, great, great off-road. Uh, and then, you know, the last $50,000 vehicle for off-roading is is the Toyotas, you know, the, the TRD Pro Taco, the Tacoma, and the 4Runner. They'll go pretty much anywhere. And pictured here is the existing uh, power wagon. <laughs> I'm behind. Which are, they're, fucking, <laughs> they're awesome trucks. They have crazy low range. They got a winch from the factory, a big warm winch. Like, they're, they're great trucks. They're just enormous. And it's still a shame that you can't get the diesel in it, even if all the limitations are what the limitations are. Uh, but yeah, the last fifty thousand dollar is is the four hundred, you know, and that and the Tacoma. Like, you buy one, drive it every day for fifteen years, and the thing's just not going to give a shit. So the Got all the aftermarket in the world. The so, only issue I ran into with these is trying to find one below fifty, even. Even these, like listed, and I, I did Facebook Marketplace for most of my stuff today just to mm. uh, be consistent. But like, find it, like they're really proud of all of them right now. Like, any mm-hmm. dude who bought one is listing theirs that they bought at 50 for 60. Like, it's sure. And there was that one Toyota dealer on the East Coast that we saw at a $25,000 markup on a new one that made it 70 yeah. plus. Like, don't do that if yeah. uh pro tip for everybody listening never pay over msrp uh, right. it's you know supply and demand basic economics but the trd pros right now are hot the same way that the bronco is and was hot the same way that every new off-roader the 392 the hellcats you know hot means that they're going to sell for money and if you can hold out a bit and spend like just shy of 50 or just around 50 for a TRD pro treat it well, it'll treat you well. And it'll go pretty much everywhere you point it. Just fucking don't, you know, don't give in to these asshole dealers who are adding the price of a fucking Corolla to the price of a forerunner. Yeah. It's not know? okay. Uh, 75, 75, <laughs> 75 is a lot of money it is a lot of money but it's the first time an ev money. pops up first time yeah and and i think as we continue to do this it's only going to change for the better on the front of evs but yeah rivian r1t and r1s you spend about like low 70s to mid or high 70s and they you get they start low 70s they start low 70s but they're you know supremely capable and everybody that's driven them has loved them and, you know, I, I'd be weary of crunching one on a, on a trail, but. The the one I built on the website got into the low 80s. And that wasn't me like adding a ton mm-hmm. of fancy stuff. It was like, I need all of the seats. And they were like, okay, right. you're going to pay more. And they're like, God damn it. Like, yeah. the thoughts I have all the time about like one or two less kids would make things a lot simpler, but <laughs> I like them. I really do. <laughs> Yeah. At what point is a small trip? Um, so Rivian, yeah, the Rivian is the obvious in the seventy-five thousand dollars range because it's the the most notable four-wheel drive uh, vehicle, like real four-wheel drive vehicle in the electric space right now. Right. And the exact contrary to the three ninety-two <laughs> Wrangler, exactly, which burns all of the gas that the Rivian does. Which technically. I don't think you can get a 392 under 70. No, probably it technically not. needs to bump up a category. It uh, does, but we're putting it there because it doesn't really bucket into the next one. And okay. it's close enough. But the other two are the Raptor. Yep. The you can get a Raptor on 37s for about 75, the new new one. Mm-hmm. The Raptor R that we'll talk about probably next time we do this thing is going to be more <laughs> expensive by by quite a bit and uh, probably approaching TRX price. And the last one for 75 grand or so is the Defender, 
you know? Yeah. Get a good defender for 75. Like really, really, really highly optioned. Pretty much everything you can spec onto those things short of V8, which touches 100 plus, you know, 110 and is just, from everything I've read, needlessly stupid. Uh, and, you know, we have Johnny Lieberman on after he drives that thing. He'll probably preach it to the world, but. Tell us why need... it's perfect and it'll be he'll fine. Tell us he, he, he inevitably will, but you don't need that. As Especially much as he's, we're talking off roaders, you know. Yeah, as much as he's talked up Rivian with, I felt like he dogged on the TRX the whole time when he was talking yeah. about their trip. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you know, you're you're talking about pretty inventive and scope pushing entity versus yeah. oh, what's like the. I mean, it's for lack of a better joke here it's a fucking dinosaur you know oh, yeah. like that's just what it is so yeah so defender you know the defender's great uh the three liters great go everywhere you point it so this that's is 75 grand 75 grand is oddly like a weird weird category here well my find is very on point because i found a sixty thousand dollar raptor yeah, no. <laughs> uh, that's a good i mean that's 60 grand for 2018 with 90,000 miles is that's spot on for today's money, man. Yeah. Wish it, it wasn't, but it's, I, it's got, uh, they got some great 15, wheels 52, on it. Are those 1552 or are those? I think they are. Yeah. So they look like, I think they're the turbo Mac HDs. They do look like that. But um, yeah. That's, that's and I'm a big fan of a bronze wheel on a white truck. So yep. it's, it's a good look. Mm-hmm. Big fan of bronze wheel. So yeah, buy that. Change the exhaust for the quietest one you can find. And uh, uh, yeah, so real real fast on Raptors, like it, the Raptor feels reasonable after you've driven the TRX, which is fucking crazy because the Raptor, the Raptor is a is big is truck. Oh, Norris! You remember when the Raptor came out and every and at the time the Raptor came out, it was huge. The F-150 was huge. And when the Raptor came out, I was like, oh my God, it's six inches. Like, how can it, how can it be six inches bigger? I am yeah. also writing a really inappropriate commercial right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> From the marketing space. Yes, you are. Yeah. So, uh, uh, 100 grand, which... <laughs> Ford Raptor, six digit, six inches bigger. <laughs> well, so six digit price point now. <laughs> six digits. Well, between seventy five and one hundred. So the Yukon AT four and the Tahoe Z seventy one. They're they're touching high seventies, low eighties, which is fucking crazy. Yeah, but they're good. They're good off road. Sean Holman loves them. Or loves the AT four at least. So that's that. Um, Two hundred series Land Cruiser and LX five seventy sub hundred, which is kind of disturbing to say because they've been out and they're technically out of production as of this recording but right they they went into production in like what late 2007 or early 2008 so how many yeah. presidents ago was that uh two three um three but um four uh technically that was two it might have been a trump and now we got a biden for a year but what was late 2012 13 yeah who was president in 2007 that was bush okay sure four Four. Four. social studies test i'll fail i did not (laughs) (laughs) yeah me too i'm surprised i even know this seventh grade civics is not coming into play right now (laughs) so so, so, i will say though like for the 200 series Yes, we have it listed here because the newer ones are still up at this price point, but like you could probably get some all the way down to the upper 20s, lower 30s. You can, but don't buy those. They're going to have 300,000 miles and be just neglected to the end of their life. Unless you, unless Fit, you find you know, perfect examples. Right. And Grandma. on that front too, if you're <laughs> looking to buy something where you can drive it for the rest of your life and you know make a payment or like just buy it outright and, and just not have any concerns whatsoever, Buy the newest and best Land Cruiser you can. And if you buy a 2018 to 2021 Land Cruiser or LX570, it's going to be $70,000 or 80, 
90, even a hundred. And I saw a, a heritage edition go for like almost 110 recently, but <laughs> you know, it's the most durable vehicle on the, re- on the world. Based on our market right world. now, that makes sense actually. Yeah. Right. And once things go, once things normalize in uh, 2027, um, <laughs> like then, you know, then buy one at 40 or 50. So my hundred K pick, it's still loading. It's not very helpful right now. I used to have fast internet and then the kids did something. Sherp. Nope, not a Sherp. Shout out to Matt Schwartz though, because it's listed on Expedition Portal and he wrote the art listing for it. Yeah, hey Matt. 2021 Ram 2500 Tradesman 4x4, 6.4 Hemi, Ute flatbed with a four-wheel camper on it. Guy's asking 98. That's a ton of truck. That's a ton of truck, a ton of tires. ton of truck. Look at those. That's a ton of truck. Look how big those wheels and tires are like that. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's all I can come up. That's probably $130,000 or $140,000 worth of truck for a sub hundred. You sell your house. You live out of that thing. Hmm. I got to stash some kids somewhere. Now, of course, my internet's now going to spin wheel of pinwheel of death. Uh, (sighs) Well, we're almost done. So let's just, if you're still there and if we're still here, we'll do the final category, which is the money no option. I won the lottery and uh and you know, which one do you prefer? Here? My long-term investments. Tell which tell me which I one prefer? you want first. Yeah. Because you have a list here, and I don't think you have them in order. So which one would Ross want? Honestly, I have not looked into these enough to to answer that with uh with a real a real solid one. So yeah. I'm, a, I'm gonna give you that. What, what about yours? Why don't you give us your money no option? I, I'm off roading in uh the lap of luxury and you know well, don't care I, about my retirement or my kids or you know well, see, I, saving I, anybody. I always apply them to the scenario and mm-hmm. it, it always ends up going back to global expedition vehicles because they they don't just build. Mm-hmm. like earth roamers are very much a specific window you're getting a crew cab whether it's yep. four or six but you're getting that that crew cab pickup okay. where with the global expedition vehicles you can get the the giant international quad cabs <laughs> that you can stash uh, it takes up as much real estate thing. as my house <laughs> exactly. it's fucking enormous <laughs> that is an international truck with a camera yeah. on it that is also yeah. beautiful it's gorgeous. I love it. And they're near me. I should, those. They're like three hours away. I should drive down. You should visit them. I'm also willing to bet those tires are two grand each. Yeah, they've they got to be pricey. And I'm sure there's a spare on the back too, just because yep. they always have those. Uh, but That's yeah, a full cool rig though. The How much is that? Like oh, four? It's up Five? There. I, I haven't priced one in forever. Um, okay. So the other the others in this category are the obvious. The Earth Roam or Earth Cruiser sportsmobile or if you're looking for something every day the most g-wagon you you know g50 think i oh, think that is it what not. is it called now what is it is a 550 550 g63 or G6, yeah G. so i didn't list that just came which one you joint off-road yeah that's <laughs> see I, I don't know how much Chris and them actually build the whole van for you. I know they do a lot of stuff underneath. So um, if you throw them 250 grand, that's true. Grand, if I give them enough money, Chris will probably want. build yep. me anything. <laughs> yep. So I did for the viewer, it's the earth cruiser with the quad cab. And I'm pretty sure I can slide four across that back row. I think those come with seating for four in the back row. Um, my problem I'm starting to run into is my oldest son is no longer kid sized. Mm. Uh, he is 13 mm. and he's closing in on 5'10, 180. So that's an adult in some places. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm an adult, and uh, <laughs> and I was 5'10 before I had a disc sliced out of my spine, <laughs> and I've never been 180. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So come meet my kid. <laughs> yep I'll make yeah i'll be small. like hi nice to meet you uh, i've up. already some we've seen with him because he's always he's always been like really high and he's always been on the higher end of the waist he's always field, been really so. high okay well really tall sorry he's always been tall for his yeah. age you don't oh, live man. in colorado no we don't uh missouri's <laughs> right next door though um <laughs> i think that's medical only though i think i don't know mm. I'm not i'm not up mm. on the mm. 
the rules, but he has always like, he's always been bigger than his age. And so mm. we've watched people his entire life talk to him like he is older than his age. And so even now at 13, we've seen a couple instances where adults are talking to him as if he is a person who should be conversing mm. with adults. And he's still very much in kid mind. So he's like, I don't know why you're talking to me. Just please stop talking to me. <laughs> Hot dogs, boobs. Exactly. Video so, games. <laughs> yeah. The other, uh, I know I've told the story before where he made fun of me for my size 12s. Mm -hmm. uh, he was shopping for 15s the other day and couldn't find anything. And I was like, I told you it was coming. I told you it was coming. <laughs> I have a long comment on that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, yeah, so, you know, which... So, oh, hold on. Let me let me pull Chris's U join up real fast. Yeah, U join's a good place to be in, in the hundred plus range because, man, he's got a lot of like, he'll he'll, yeah. you know what Chris is? Chris is you buy the RV and you just have him throw the four wheel drive underneath it. You buy something that's two wheel drive. You give and it to he him makes and makes it. He yes. gives you something that you can live out of pretty much anywhere without having to deal with a rooftop tent bullshit or, you know, any kind of camping. And, and, I, uh, and I know yeah. like, yeah, this isn't going to get winnie. you the right. It's a mini winnie, but like he put the four by four system underneath it. So like, yes, they're built for long Island beaches. This is, yep. yeah, but there's a lot of open space in Utah where Colorado, this Wyoming. wouldn't hurt. Yeah. So. That also has the uh, Mickey Thompson FJ8 hole look like wheels. Yes, it does. <laughs> it's exactly the wheel you were talking about earlier. Yep. Yep. So, anyways, we are pushing on time here. Yep. We are. Uh, we. Yeah. I, I actually know how much time we've been doing because I kept the timer this time. So, <laughs> uh, have you written anything? Yeah, Off-roaders at any budgets. Uh, ATV driver, UTV rider. You definitely did those it. backwards. You said ATV driver and UTV rider. Did I? No, ATV yeah, rider and UTV driver. Oh, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Everybody knows. Everybody's listening to those. Those are, uh, those are my two big outlets right now. And yeah, more coming. So yeah. And so, well, I'll wrap it up. You can rate and review the show on iTunes. Uh, help us out. We, we are, by the time this goes up, we are so close to a, uh, basically we doubled our second year. So whatever we did yep. our first year, we doubled that in the second year, which is kind of amazing. Um, to be honest, we weren't really upset with what we did our first year. We thought that was fairly respectable. That was okay. Happy with it. And Thank you everybody it, for listening. Yeah. Have it double the second year is, uh, is as refreshing, if not more refresh, I, I, refreshing is yeah. not the right word. Yeah. It's confidence inspiring. And also yeah. we got some big shit we, coming. Yeah. We're Ross and I've spent a lot of time talking to each other in the last two years. Yeah, so right. it's <laughs> nice to have, see actual numbers growing. Oh, and gro like it's oh, been, yeah. yeah. So uh, ooh, one of those things that are coming, it would have been a Volvo wagon when we were talking about Volvo wagons earlier. She Volvo wagons, numerous one anyway, completely off topic on purpose yep. right now. Yep. So follow Good Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can we were right there. So UTV driver, ATV rider, everyday driver still, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was in the list of my much. head, so I didn't know yep. it was much, list. much, much, much. Okay. Yeah, all of those. Uh Ross is at no, not like the one from Friends. I'm at Overlanding Dad. The show is at Off the Road Again Podcast on Instagram. It's been forever since I actually plugged the show's uh, Instagram link. But uh, yeah, you can follow that. I'm going to start clipping some stuff out here. So we'll see how that goes. So yeah, I think it'll go well. And also, I think this might be the first time that I'm saying it, but please rate and review. <laughs> give us give us the boost. Like the boost and subscribe to get on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, all that out. shit. So sweet. Uh, yeah, let's do it. This is the show. We did it.